Dr. Al Roten with the Department of Neurosurgery, he was a chair and had really, he always talked about the brain being the crown jewel. He and Dick Smith, who was in pediatrics, had always had this vision of a brain institute. The MBI started 20 years ago with a sort of a frantic concept from Dr. Bill Lutke and a notion of getting state funding to build a building and launch an institute. And Dr. Lutke frantically worked with his wife to submit a, a, a grant. Because a lot of times when you have to put a grant out, the advertisement you know, you, if you don't want a lot of people to see it, you put it into obscure journals and in obscure places. And so they put out that request proposal in Business Daily, which was not usually a place a scientist would be looking. Within a very short period of time, under a great deal of pressure, he organized a ton of people. I think he, he was in his office day and night for weeks and weeks, putting together this last minute competitive proposal, and I remember seeing it in his office. It was like four feet of paper stacked up. He submitted the grant. Miami submitted a proposal for the grant, and we won. It was no contest, and so they granted it to the University of Florida. Mr. and Mrs. McKnight uh, were interested in uh, doing something to affect the outcome of people and being able to live independently longer. In fact, they used to drive around Dade County on Sunday afternoons uh, in Miami area looking for property to build a brain institute. There also was a wonderful program by the state of Florida. For uh, $15 million, you could name a building and they would match that gift dollar for dollar. It brings the recognition because the McKnight family is known for various uh, scientific activities and support of research. It also was a, a cutting-edge concept at the time to take those neuromedicine specialties and put them together in one building. So that was very, very attractive to me that neurosurgery, neurology, and psychiatry would be in the same building where my lab was. It increased the chances for interactions, the collisions, and um, opportunities for discussions between clinicians and basic scientists. One of the driving forces behind Dr. Lucky's real passion was technology. The technology at the MBI has really sort of been a godsend for psychiatry and related um, research areas. Seldom do you have in a single place the levels of collaboration, the interacting departments, and the facilities themselves that will afford you the opportunity to do really competitive cutting-edge work. At the MBI we have that. One of the things that the Brain Institute really did for the University of Florida was it, it became a magnet that aligned people and, and attracted people to this place and, and that is very powerful. I think it would be difficult to underestimate the impact that the MBI has had on recruiting. One of the key factors in uh, our decision to relocate our research team here to the University of Florida was the existence of the McKnight Brain Institute and the real specialized opportunity that created the clinical disciplines that are related to the brain, all being housed in one institute, really allowed for the uh, unique interactions between the clinicians and the scientists uh, and conversations about what directions to take in research that just would not happen uh, if these investigators and physicians weren't together. The mission of the McKnight Brain Institute is pretty simple. It's to support neuroscience research. Uh, our specific focus is really to try to, you know, conduct the highest quality basic science discovery and to translate that into therapies that could ultimately benefit patients. The McKnight Brain Institute, although we have a building, is much more than the building itself. We have over 150 faculty who are spread across the 16 colleges uh, of the University of Florida. We have some of the world's experts in various areas of neurologic research such as neurodegenerative disorders including Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease, experts on brain aging, neuro-oncology, especially developing novel treatments for glioblastoma, addiction, and psychiatric disorders such as autism and brain and spinal cord injury. One of our big missions has to be to help to 
train the next generation? You know, can we inspire them to, to remain in this field and go after the, the things that we couldn't dream of 20 years ago, 20 years in the future? My hope for the future is that uh, with our having started the gift from the McKnight Brain Research Foundation, it will be catalytic and stimulating research in cognitive aging in its own domain. And, and I think now that we look back and, and at what the, the mission was and what the plans and the architectural plans were for the McKnight Brain Institute, if we fast forward, I mean, you know, we're seeing some spectacular teams of people doing some really amazing things. I think it's starting to encompass that vision that Bill always dreamed it would be. He was so keen on embracing new technologies and being on the forefront and cutting edge. And uh, so he was always enthusiastic with anyone who was working towards something that would take us to the next level. I've never in my entire experience here at the University of Florida approached another scientist about an idea or moving something forward and had them say, I'm not interested. So it, that spirit of willingness to, to think outside the box and work together that I think really is, is what makes it a wonderful place to work and a wonderful place to strive to do things that can make a difference for people one day.